ಆಯತೆ ನಮ ಹಸತೋಮಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮೋತಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮೃತಂಗಮಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಬೋ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಗಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾರ್ನೇಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ರೇ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಿ ಅನ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಟು ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಲೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಡೆತ್ ಟು ಇ ಮೋರ್ಟಾಲಿಟಿ ವು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ discussing about topics and the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna helping us to go forward in our spiritual path. Today's topic which I have chosen is struggle. So the value of struggle, how it is very important in our life. There is no life without struggle. everyone in this universe is passing through lots of struggles in fact the whole life itself is considered as a struggle but then we have to analyze what direction you are giving to your struggles if you are struggling towards materialistic way of life in other words if you are struggling towards the success of the secular world then those struggles are really futile because the struggles will not lead you towards freedom will not remove suffering will not make you peaceful on the other hand you become more frustrated depressed and lose all faith in god and sometimes you may be driven to think that there is no point in continuing the life people commit suicide on account of this extreme depression on account of extreme frustration on account of extreme disappointment on account of not finding joy in spite of struggling hard so they think life has no meaning and they cannot stay a moment longer in the life and they want to terminate the life at least they think that terminating the life brings them peace but a person who has ended up his life in frustration and disappointment when the mind was totally in agitated mood how can a such a person expect peacefulness even after killing himself so here comes the philosophy of life the philosophy of struggle how one has to face struggles in life and what should be the meaning of struggles and why struggle at all what is the purpose of struggle so everything becomes important when you really are aspiring for real freedom when you are aspiring really to have the vision of god 
when you really want to commune with divine spirit so that goal must be very clear and fixed my goal in this life is to realize god and i am prepared to face any struggle in order to realize my goal so then everything becomes meaningful then struggling also has got tremendous value to the spiritual aspirant shri ramkrishna tells in the gospel always keep your mind fixed on god always is important because you don't know when you are not thinking of god how the mind would behave how you would be degraded how you, you would get lost you will not know so shri ramkrishna is struggling is struggling teaching to keep your mind always fixed on god always remember him then even when you have to pass through the channel of struggling you won't feel any difficulty because you always feel strengthened by uttering the name of god by repeating the name of god that is to say somehow you must cherish love towards god devotion towards god and then everything comes all right <coughs> in the beginning it's not so easy to keep the mind fixed on god even though you want to keep the mind fixed it runs away immediately after a moment so that means in the beginning you must struggle those struggling starts whatever way you whatever way the life you are leading whether you are living a secular life or you are living a spiritual life you have to pass through struggle you have to struggle struggle for the good to become good to formate yourself to give right direction to your spiritual journey and to counteract all the negative forces occupying your mind you have to struggle shri ramakrishna himself tells you must struggle a little later you will enjoy your pension shri ramakrishna also tells how you should conduct yourself during the period of struggle you should follow the method of discrimination you must have analytical open mind then you will not be afraid of struggle on the other hand you feel strengthened on account of struggling that's the beauty if you are analytical in your outlook and if you are discriminating properly then you would be able to direct the whole mind to god shri ramakrishna again tells the first stage is that of the beginner in the beginning the person concentrates upon studies and he wants to hear more and more he wants to attend lectures and discourses and debates and seminars interfaith meetings all over the world he keeps running and running in that way but that is the first stage you have to hear then only you will be able to implement some of the ideas which you have heard that's why our uh, ancient hindu tradition always pays importance for studying the scriptures scriptures which deal with the nature of atman 
which deal with God. So you must constantly, every day, think about the source of this universe, the creator, preserver and destroyer of this universe. You must always think of the divine spirit. So, studying and hearing is the first stage. The second stage is the stage of struggling. Because you are living the life, as I said earlier, life is always full of struggles, in one way or other. And so, what is the struggle he has to face now? Whenever he tries to worship God, whenever he tries to come to the chapel, whenever he tries to meditate, mind goes in a different way. That means you are simply pulled by a force, as it were, in a different direction. But then you have to be aware of your goal. My goal is to see God in this life. Am I doing real sadhana? Am I doing any practice or simply wasting my time? If you are not thinking of God, if you are not concentrating on the spiritual ideas, then really you are wasting the time and all your struggle ends up in vain. So, he prays, he meditates, he sings, he repeats the name of God. He does all these things consciously concentratedly with full awareness. In that way he is controlling the mind not allowing the mind to run after in its own way and he is engaging the mind so tight in the spiritual practices and he feels in that way of struggling glimpse of joy, glimpse of peace. So, struggling is very essential and important. Never condemn or never be discouraged to pass through struggles. Particularly when you are trying to unfold your spiritual dimension, you must be ready to face struggling in the life. So it is very essential and important. Without struggling, you won't get a thing you wanted. It is true that everyone tastes failure in life. Life means ups and downs. Where there is down, there must be up. Where there is up, there must be down. So they alternate ups and downs. Sometimes you are up and sometimes you are down. It is never the same. The important lesson to remember is that you should keep struggling all the time, no matter what the results are. So your strength must be applied properly to face the struggling, to face the struggles in life. You should continue with your struggle even when there is a success. For it is possible to improve upon the success you have so far achieved. Try to do better always and you can never say that you have had enough. Nothing succeeds like success. What you achieve externally through your struggle may be important 
But what you achieve internally, that is, in terms of your character, in terms of your personality, that's more important. That's why it is important that you should keep struggling even when you have achieved what you wanted to achieve. If you fail, it is no reason that you should give up trying. You may fail again and again. You should go on trying till your last breath. The Bhagavad Gita teaches that you should work regardless of whether you get your reward or not. You love to work and you do it. The idea is that work itself is its reward. There is no other reward to look forward to. If there is any other reward, it is incidental. The reward is an incentive but it may prove illusory. It may even be a deterrent to further efforts. There is a story where a person was practicing meditation in the forest and because of his power of concentration, he developed special power and he was so happy to get that reward by just gazing at a particular object, the object would be burnt up and if he wants that to be revived by just willing, the object would revive itself. But then he was just making use of that power more constantly and thereby not continuing his spiritual journey, his spiritual struggle, he got stuck up there on account of the reward he got, which was illusory, which was deceptive. It was taking him, it was changing his direction towards God. He, instead of going towards God, he was going in a different way. So take care of the means and the end will take care of itself. That is to say, try your best. That's the only thing you can do and that's also the only secret to success. You may try your best, but that doesn't mean that there is any guarantee that you will succeed. The Gita does not want you to labor under any false delusion about the results of your efforts. It may be that in spite of everything you have done, success will elude you. But you should still keep trying. When you do so, the hidden powers within you unfold themselves and this is much more important than what you wanted to gain externally. It is the experience you have through constant trying that matters. You may fail again and again, yet it is a small price you pay, you pay compared to what you gain in terms of your personality. You become maturer in your judgment, your vision becomes clearer, you grow stronger, you become bolder, you become a vastly better person in all respects. Seen in this light, the saying, failures are the pillars of success, makes sense. Never to give up trying in the face of repeated failures. That is the lesson of the Bhagavad Gita. The real test of a man is when he is confronted with adversity. When everything is easy and smooth, it is easy to go on. But to go on when there are difficulties, when you are persistently dogged by ill luck, requires much courage. It is possible to build up such an inner strength as to be able to defy all hostile forces within or without and pursue one's objective with unflinching devotion. One way of building up strength is to know that life is a sport. 
Sri Ramakrishna himself tells many times in the gospel, everything is a sport of God. This universe is the Lila Kshetra, the field of game. The rule of the game is that whatever happens, we should always go on. Taking both success and failure in your stride. That's the rule of the game. Leave nothing to chance. Depend upon your own efforts. A coward barks at difficulties. A bold man welcomes them because he wants to measure his strength against them. To dare and never to fear difficulties is the most important lesson to remember. If you study the life of Kunti in Mahabharata, how from the beginning of her life unto the end, how much she had to pass through tremendous difficulties, sufferings, humiliation, in spite of all these things, she was very devoted, very cheerful, her devotion to Lord Krishna became very strong on account of these difficult situations and sufferings. And so she prays to Lord Krishna, O oh Krishna, it is amazing. Though I am passing through all these difficult circumstances, I am able to maintain happiness on account of your vision. O oh Lord, please grant me your vision all the time. I am not afraid of suffering. Even if I have to undergo suffering, I am prepared. But only one condition, O oh Lord, you must be always with me and I must always have your vision. Granting that you put me anywhere you want. That is the attitude we should have. Our devotion to God must not be shaken on account of things happening around us or things happening to us in any manner. In fact, as I said, that is a test. So many ways tests come and you feel more and more joy when you are trying to pass all these tests in life. The real test is conquering of your mind, your senses, establishing your real mastership over mind and senses and that way the human life must be utilized. Human life is meant for struggling, to struggle to get into freedom, freedom from bondage, to get into the eternal abode of God, to get into your own true real self. So if you apply struggle in this fashion, then you are really very happy person in this world. With these words, I conclude this topic. Struggling, page 636. Master said, Pray to God with a yearning heart and weep. That will purify your heart. You see the reflection of the sun in clear water. In the mirror of his eye consciousness, the devotee sees the form of primal energy, Brahman, with attributes. But the mirror must be wiped clean. One doesn't see the right reflection if there is any dirt on the mirror. As long as a man must see the sun in the water of his eye consciousness and has no other means of seeing it, as long as he has no means of seeing the real sun except through its reflection, so long is the reflected sun alone 100% real to him. As long as the eye is real, so long is the reflected sun real, 100% real. That reflected sun is nothing but the primal energy. But if you seek Brahma Jnan, the knowledge of the attributeless Brahman, then proceed to the real sun through its reflection. Pray to Brahman with attributes, who listens to your prayers. And he himself will give you full knowledge of Brahman. For that which is Brahman with attributes is verily Brahman without attributes. That which is Brahman is verily Shakti. 
one realizes this non-duality after the attainment of perfect knowledge. The Divine Mother gives her devotee Brahmajnana too. But a true lover of God generally doesn't seek the knowledge of Brahman. There is another path, the path of knowledge, which is very difficult. You members of the Brahma Samaj are not jnanis, you are bhaktas. The jnani believes that Brahman alone is real and the world illusory as a dream. To him, I and you are illusory as a dream. God is our inner controller. Pray to him with pure and guileless heart. He will explain everything to you. Give up egotism and take refuge in him. You will realize everything. The Master said, Dwell, O mind, within yourself. Enter no other's home. If you but seek there, you will find all you are searching for. God, the true philosopher's stone, who answers every prayer, lies hidden deep within your heart, the richest gem of all. How many pearls and precious stones are scattered all about the outer coat that lies before the chamber of your heart. He continued, When you mix with people outside your samaj, love them all. When in their company, be one of them. Don't harbor malice towards them. Don't turn up your nose in hatred and say, Oh, this mean this man believes in God with form and not in the formless God. That man believes in the formless God and not in God with form. This man is a Christian, this man is a Hindu, and this man is a Muslim. It is God alone who makes people see things in different ways. Know that people have different natures. Realize this and mix with them as much as you can and love all, but enter your own inner chamber to enjoy peace and bliss. Lighting the lamp of knowledge in the chamber of your heart, behold the face of the mother, Brahman's embodiment. You can see your true self only within your own chamber. The cowherds take the cows to graze in the pasture. There the Cattle mix, they all form one herd. But on returning to their sheds in the evening, they are separated. Then each stays by itself in its own stall. Therefore I say, dwell by yourself in your own chamber. It was ten o'clock in the evening. The master got into a carriage to return to Dakshineshwar. One or two attending devotees got with him, got in with him. The carriage stood under a tree in deep darkness. Benny Paul wanted to send some sweets and other food with Sri Ramakrishna for Ramlal, the master's nephew. Benny Paul said, Sir, Ramlal was not here this evening. With your permission, I should like to send some sweets for him by your attendance. Master said with great anxiety, Oh, Benny Paul, oh, sir, Please don't send these things with me. That will do me harm. It is never possible for me to lay up anything. I hope you won't mind. Benny Paul said, As you please, sir. Please give me your blessing. Master said, Oh, we have been very happy today. You see, he alone is a true man who has made money his servant. But those who do not know the use of money are not men even though they have human forms. They may have human bodies, but they behave like animals. You are blessed indeed. You have made so many devotees happy today. You shall stop here. That means struggling has got a significant role in everyone's life. It helps you to formate your character. It helps you to build up your inner spiritual strength. It makes you more courageous and bold and face any situation that may come up. And finally, it leads you towards the vision of God. That means you will attain freedom where you enjoy peace and bliss. That is the summary of my talk today. Chant the name of the Lord 
and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o self drown deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bath for weary souls various are thy names o lord in each and every name thy power resides no times are set no rites are needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my wretchedness who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name o my mind be humbler than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree take no honor to thyself give honor to all chant unceasingly the name of the lord o lord and soul of the universe mine is no prayer for wealth or revenue the playthings of lust or the toys of fame as many times as i may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant o sweet one in thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet o oh, how i long for the day when an instant separation from thee o lord will be as a thousand years when my heart burns away with its desire and the world without thee is a heartless void prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion neither imploring the embrace of thy arms nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who still as the hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt for thou art my heart's beloved thou and thou alone o lord lead us from the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good may all be actuated by noble thoughts may all rejoice everywhere may all be happy may all be free from disease may all realize what is good may none be subject to misery May the wicked become virtuous may the virtuous reign tranquility may the tranquil be free from bonds may the freed make others free may good be died all people may the sovereign righteously rule the earth may all beings ever attain what is good may the worlds be prosperous and happy may the clouds pour rain in time may the earth be blessed with crops May all countries be freed from calamity may holy men live without fear may the lord the destroyer of sins the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased he being satisfied the whole universe feels satisfied